Hi, my name is Anita Cameron. I am a 57 year old uh, black woman with long locks and caramel colored skin. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm wearing a wine colored sweater. I'm going to read my remarks and so I'm going to turn off my camera while I'm reading my, my remarks and then I'll come back on. So as I said, my name is Anita Cameron. I'm a 57-year-old Black woman with multiple disabilities. I am a disability justice activist. And for 37 years, I've organized with ADAPT, a national grassroots disability organization known for direct action and nonviolent civil <clears throat> disobedience. I participated in historic actions like the 1990 Capitol Crawl and Rotunda Takeover, pushing successfully for the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as the 2017 Fight to Save Medicaid, where disabled people were dragged out of congressional offices. I have been arrested 140 times fighting for civil and human rights for the disability community. And my experiences shape my views against assisted suicide. So in 2009, uh, while living in Washington state, my mother was determined to have end-stage chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and placed in hospice. Her doctor had us so convinced that she was dying that after six months in hospice, she moved home to Colorado to die. But six weeks later, she and I were arrested together in Washington, D.C., fighting for disability rights. After that, she became active in her community and lived almost 12 years more. Assisted suicide is dangerous, especially for disabled, sick folks, seniors, and marginalized people. It creates a two-tiered system where one state of health determines whether one receives adequate care. As a Black disabled woman, I have experienced both racial and disability discrimination in healthcare. The most blatant example of this was when I went to the emergency department last year in intractable pain. A white woman also in pain was next to me. She got dilated, a potent pain medication, while I got a pat on the shoulder and sent home. And research shows that Black patients are also, you know, they're less likely to receive adequate pain treatment due to false beliefs about biological differences between Blacks and whites, which will add to further pressure to seek assisted suicide. So how does racial disparities in, relate in healthcare relate to assisted suicide? So research has documented Black, Asian, and Hispanic persons regularly receive barriers to palliative and hospice care utilization. A 2016 JAMA internal medicine study found that hospice patients were less likely to be visited by staff in their last two days of life if they were Black. Even more alarming, California nursing facilities with higher numbers of Black and Latino residents have had higher rates of death. And although Black people and other people of color re uh, request assisted suicide less than white people at this point, as the practice is normalized, they're more at risk of pressure to do so. Uh, first, because racial disparities in healthcare leads to limited health choices and poor health outcome, outcomes, and that includes death. Economic disparities make it less likely that patients can afford life-saving treatment and more likely that doctors will write off patients as terminal, thus eligible for assisted suicide. So as long as racial disparities and disability discrimination in our healthcare system exists, there's no place for assisted suicide. And stopping California's assisted suicide law is both a disability rights and a health equity issue.